the radical study was designed in and around 2004-2005 to address the question of treatment for patients who'd had radical prostatectomy who had high-risk features. And there were two components to the trial. One was to address the issue of radiotherapy with hormone therapy, androgen deprivation therapy, known as radicals HD. And the second question was to address the issue of the timing of radiotherapy, whether it should be given immediately or whether it should be gave, given in a delayed manner. That was radicals uh, HT, or hormonal timing. In my presentation on behalf of the radicals investigators uh, at the ESMO meeting 2023, um, I was reporting the long-term results of radicals uh, ready therapy timing. We had previously reported the radicals results for this part of the trial uh, at ESMO 2020 and published those findings in um, the Lancet Oncology. And they had looked at the effect of treatment early late uh, in patients looking at their uh, treatment failure rate, predominantly looking at PSA failure or other events such as metastasis, prostate cancer death and so on. What we'd shown in that first analysis was that patients who had been treated with salvage radiotherapy on failure uh, had just the same benefit as those patients treated immediately following their radical prostatectomy. But the important finding there was that a very high proportion of men didn't need any treatment at all. What we also found was that the complication rate, most notably rectal and bladder toxicity, was higher when patients were treated with the adjuvant therapy by comparison with those who were delayed. Now in the um, follow-up, which is the long-term uh, report, which was for a large-scale trial of just under 1,400 patients, we were able to report on overall survival and metastasis-free survival, which is a direct surrogate of overall survival. What we found was that the results that we presented in the earlier ESMO study based on biochemistry were borne out by metastasis-free survival and overall survival. In other words, salvage treatment for PSA failure was as effective as adjuvant treatment, but approximately 40% or so of the patients needed treatment and the rest of them didn't. So this saved a huge amount of uh, treatment for men who didn't need therapy. What we also found was that the side effects were, in the long term, uh, were sustained. In other words, if a patient had developed post-treatment bladder-related problems or post-treatment rectal symptoms, then they continued out of the 10-year time interval. So the conclusion, which I think really settles this issue of whether patients should have radiotherapy after radical prostatectomy, is this, that they don't need treatment unless they show signs of failure subsequently. And if they do, then there is potential benefit.